In the 16th podcast, uh, we're going to be looking at something called the reactivity series of metals. Now, we've already seen that alkaline metals in group 1 of the periodic table are very reactive. Uh, all the metals we, we looked at react uh, very readily with water. And in this image here, we can see lithium, which is in water, giving out a lot of heat. Um, there's a flame there. Um, very reactive metal. Other metals aren't as reactive as the alkaline metals, but in general, nearly all metals will react with water, steam, or acid to some extent. Now here's quite a reactive metal, um, magnesium, but on the image on the left we can see magnesium in water and very little is happening, uh, no reaction going on really there. But if we put magnesium in acid, we see a very strong reaction. So magnesium is quite a reactive metal, but it doesn't really react with water, but it reacts with uh, acid. Scientists have, have done this experiment with uh, all metals uh, to see their reactivity with water, steam, or acid, and put them into an order with um, the most reactive at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. And this list is called the reactivity series. So we know that the alkaline metals are all close to the top. Guess what kind of metals come at the bottom of the list? So at the top we've got lithium, rubidium, potassium, barium, calcium, sodium, so group 1 and group 2 metals, magnesium, aluminium. Carbon is in there for comparison. It's not a metal, obviously. Zinc, chromium, iron, cobalt, nickel, tin, lead, hydrogen again there for comparison, copper, silver, mercury, platinum, and gold, the very precious metals at the bottom, the metals we tend to use for jewelry, amongst other things, because they simply don't corrode and they, they stay looking lustrous and beautiful for a very long time. So I've used a sort of a color code here, blue, um, indicates that these metals react with water. Green indicates that they'll react with with steam. Um, orange indicates that they react with acid and purple are generally unreactive. Um, maybe it's obvious that if these elements here react with water they will also react with steam and acid as well. These elements here they react with steam but not really water but they do react with acid. These ones, only acid, uh, water and steam, not so much. So the list tells us several things. And going from the bottom to the top, we can say that in general the metals increase in reactivity. So they corrode or they tarnish more readily. Uh, gold and platinum at the bottom don't really tarnish. The metals require more energy and different methods to be separated from their ores, uh, which is to do with metal extraction. And on an atomic level, going again from bottom to top, they lose electrons more readily to form positive ions. So the metals towards the top lose electrons more readily. So the reactivity series is a great thing, um, but in practice, it can help us with several uh, applications. And the first one is displacement reactions. Now, when metals and free metal ions that are either in solution or molten are brought together, the reactivity series tells us which metal will end up as a metal and which will end up as an ion. Now in this process, this displacement reaction, electrons may or may not switch. Um, if we imagine this metal and metal ion mixture, it may happen that the metal will give electrons to the metal ion, and as a result, the metal ion will become a metal atom and the metal will become a metal ion. It may so happen that this process doesn't take place 
and the reactivity series will essentially tell us whether or not this is going to happen. So if it does happen, metal will give away electrons to become a positive ion. Electrons are negative, so if electrons are given away, we end up with a positive ion. If this happens, we say that it's been oxidized. If a metal ion receives electrons, negative electrons, to become a metal atom, we say that it's been reduced. Now, why have I got a picture of an oil rig in the bottom right corner here? Well, oil rig, very nice picture, but this little acronym helps us to rem uh, helps us remember what's going on here. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So it just helps us to remember what the oxidation, the oxidized word, and the reduction or reduce word means. So let's take a look at an example. Now here I've got a beaker with copper sulfate solution in it. That's an ionic solution of copper ions and sulfate ions floating around. You can see them there. And I've got an iron key, just a piece of iron, uh, Fe. It's in there floating around. Now iron is higher in the reactivity series, which means it's more easily oxidized. So it uh, is likely, in this situation, to give away electrons. Now it will give away its electrons, and the iron will become an ion, an iron ion. The copper ions will gain those electrons and become copper metal. So what does that look like? This is the after situation here. The iron key is now coated with copper metal and the copper ions have been displaced by the Fe, the iron ions. So the copper sulfate, the copper rather, out of the copper sulfate solution has been displaced and has coated the, the uh, key with copper metal. So the, the, the key is changing color there. The iron displaces the copper ions from the copper sulfate solution because the iron is more reactive. It's higher in the reactivity series. So the iron has given away electrons to the copper. So the iron is oxidized and the copper is reduced. The reactivity series can also help us to understand what's going on in metal extraction. So let's take a look at a couple of examples there. So this first example, we're extracting iron from iron oxide or hematite. This is a blast furnace, and into it we put coke, a kind of carbon, limestone, and hematite, which is the iron ore. We put hot air, which contains oxygen in there, very, very hot, and a reaction is started. The reaction is a little complex, but in the end, the carbon will reduce the iron oxide. The carbon will reduce the iron oxide so we get iron metal and carbon dioxide. So the carbon is displacing the iron because the carbon is more reactive than the iron. Here's another example of metal extraction called the Kroll process and it's used for extracting titanium from titanium chloride. So again it's another reduction reaction where the magnesium is used to reduce the titanium ions to titanium metal. Um, I've got a chemical reaction here and we can see magnesium metal and titanium chloride, the ionic compound here. The magnesium must donate its el uh, electrons to the titanium. The titanium is reduced and the magnesium is oxidized. And we end up with titanium metal and an ionic compound of magnesium. So in this reaction um, the titanium chloride needs to be molten, needs to be liquid, the ions need to be free to move about, um, so we need to heat it up to 800 degrees Celsius or so. Not metal extraction but another reduction reaction, uh, thermite reaction. It's commonly used to weld railway tracks um, together um, it's, it's useful to do that because railway tracks can be in the middle of nowhere and we need to have a portable, very high temperature welding 
um, system. It's basically a mixture of aluminium powder and iron oxide powder. We start the reaction with a, with a burning strip of magnesium normally to raise the temperature high enough to uh, get the reaction going. And once the reaction's going, the aluminium uh, is the thing that is oxidized and it reduces uh, the iron oxide into iron metal. And then we get an, a compound of aluminium as a result. So the aluminium reduces the iron, becomes oxidized itself, and we end up with aluminium oxide. The reaction is very, very high temperature, and the, the, um, the resulting iron is, is molten, and it runs down as a liquid between the train tracks and uh, solidifies in place and welds them together. So in summary, the reactivity series is a list of all metals in order of their reactivity, or how easily they give up their electrons. And the list helps us with practical applications such as metal extraction and displacement reactions.